Hello viewers, let's say we have an API endpoint that is being handled by a function in a controller. That function registers a user and send SMS to our user calling an external API. What if we want to test this API or this function? So let's write the test code for this function and see what problems we face. So I will create a test. So I believe we have a test now which is register user controller. I will remove the comment and rename the function to test successful registration. This API is inserting data to our database so it is a post method and then we have API prefix and then user and here we need to pass name, email, phone and password so I will pass name, email, phone, password uh, by the way the class name should be something like register controller test so I will append the test at the end of this class name and here we need to fill the data with uh, some fake data so what I will use is with faker so here we can write this faker name now we are passing the fake data to our API and then we are checking the status is 200 which means success Along with that, we want to test that the data that we have passed to our API is inserted to the database successfully. So what we want to do is we want to assign this to a variable and then we want to assert this database has user stable name, user data has this name, email user data email phone user data besides we also want to check that this message is being sent from the apis so we can do something like this json fragment message is this message was sent correctly so how we are testing this code we are passing fake user data and calling this api after calling we are checking that it is responded successfully and then in the message key we are getting the correct message and then we are asserting that all data is inserted. From this test as you can see we are testing this part of our code but we are not testing this sending SMS. Even though we are not checking in our test whether this part of our code is being called correctly or not but when we call this API this function will be called anyway. Now let's run the test and see what happens. So as you can see the last test actually took longer time. It took 2 seconds. If I run them again it is taking longer time again and it is taking 6 seconds. By the way if we check our database we will see that there are 2 rows inserted in our user table. We don't want that so what we will do is we will use database transaction. So every time we run our test it will roll back every changes that we have made in our database. For example if we run our test again, test executed and then check the database so there is no new row inserted. So now we have written the test for this code but there are two problems. As we are calling an external API to send messages it will take time. As a result our test suite will take more time to execute which means our CLI pipeline will cost more time which is disturbing for our developer team. But the second problem is more critical. Right now we are sending messages using real SMS service class that sends SMS to our real user. So anytime anyone runs this test it will send SMS to our real user. We never want that. For example if we go to our controller here we are calling this send method. In this send method to simulate the real life experience what I have done is we are sleeping for 2 seconds or 7 seconds just like any external API call can take and then we are logging in our log that SMS was sent. If we check our log, let's say I am checking our log and let's run the test again. So it is taking time, it took 6 seconds now and as you can see it is sending using the real SMS service. So we don't want any of this, for example we don't want it to take 2 to 7 seconds and at the same time we don't want to send a real SMS to our customer. How do we solve this? So to test this method the first thing we want to do is we don't want to call this new real SMS. This code is literally not testable. Once you write new some class so you are creating a concrete instance which will make your code non-testable. But fortunately this real SMS is 
implementing an SMS interface. So what we can do is we can simply inject that SMS interface, SMS, and then we can write SMS send. Now Laravel will automatically inject an instance of an SMS interface, which is real SMS. So if we test our code again, it is taking time. And as you can see, we have a new SMS sent. And we don't want that, but we are one step closer. So now let's think about it. In our invoke method, we are injecting SMS interface, not real SMS or a concrete SMS class. But Laravel actually auto injecting the real SMS because there is only one implementation of SMS interface. So Laravel know that if there is only one implementation, then I already know how to resolve this. But if there was multiple class that implements this SMS interface, we have to register it in our service provider. You can watch about service provider in my service provider video. We want to check that the send method was called correctly, but we don't want to send a real SMS to our real customer at the same time we don't want our test to take more time. So what we can do is before calling this API, we will do this mock. So here we have to pass the abstract instance, which is SMS interface. And then we can pass callback. And then we have the mock interface inside it. Interface mock. And then inside it, we will say mock should receive send messages once and return true because our send method actually return true or false based on whether the sms was sent or not that's it so what we are saying is so we are saying that in sms interface we need to replace it with a mock class and that mock class will receive a send method call once and will return true so every time we do something like this sms send using the sms interface so it will say that I won't call the real SMS. In, instead of that, I will call a mock SMS. So in the mock SMS, I will make sure that the send method was called and it was called only once and it will return true. So it will mock the call and it will return true so that everything else work correctly. Now, if I make some space here and call our test, as you can see, the test pass immediately that there was no SMS sent this is exactly what we want our test is not taking much time we are not sending real sms but we are making sure that the send sms was called what if we remove this let's say we are not sending sms to our user then if we run our test the test is being failed because we are saying that the method send should be called but it is not being called so now this way we are making sure that our sms send is called correctly but we are not calling the real sms so we are not sending real sms to our user and it is not taking much time so every time we run the test it is being passed it is being passed it is being passed but it is not taking much time if we remove this uh, mocking we don't have this mock now if we run the test as you can see it is taking more time so now we know when to mock our class and how to mock our class it is not that complicated. I know many of you like me was scared of this mockery library, but it is very simple. We are simply calling this mock and then we are saying which class to be mocked. So we want to mock SMS interface and then we want to say what we want to mock. We want to mock the send SMS and it should be called once and it should return true. That's it. So I believe from now on, whenever you write test of your Laravel code that calls an external API or library or anything, you are not afraid of using this mockery library. By the way, this mockery library has nothing to do with Laravel. You can mock any class of any of your project that used PHP using this library. That's all for today. If you like this video, feel free to subscribe this channel. See you in the next one. Happy coding.